Okay. okay. Go for it. So it says you have muscles in the Great Lakes by me, Luis, William, and Devin. So some background on the zebra mussels. So zebra mussels were first introduced into the Great Lakes in the 1980s after they were dumped along with excess ballast water from international shipping vessels that were traveling within the Great Lakes. And zebra mussels are actually native to southern lakes in Russia and the Ukraine. And zebra mussels are characterized as having a more D-shaped shell and slightly resembling clams in a scent, in a way. Um, and they are around at one to two inches long at like full growth. And they also have long, no, they have light and dark stripes along their shell, hence the name zebra mussel. Interestingly enough, they are the only freshwater mollusk that firmly attaches itself to solid objects when in the water. This presents a big call for the Great Lakes because there are many solid surfaces and the, the Great Lakes are often a place for recreational use. However, zero mussels do have some benefits, um, and, it's be, and it's because of the way they eat, which is by filter feeding. When something filter feeds, it means it intakes water, filters it for food, then excretes the waste. Um, this clears and cleans water, which helps promote algae and plant growth because it allows for more photosynthesis, and this algae and plant growth helps to provide shelter and just hiding for the various species in the Great Lakes. Um, one downfall to this is that in filter feeding, they, they can take out the lower species in the food web, such as plankton. And this was shown in Lake Erie, I believe, when they took out, well, they lowered populations of walleye and whitefish. And another problem with them is that they, is that they spread very quickly and cover just about everything. This can be a big problem for companies because they can get into the pipes and just clog everything up. The companies then in turn would have to clear out the pipes, replace them, and it would just be very costly. Okay. On some benefits. Oh, okay. yeah. So, what is our problem? So, our main problem is overpopulation. This means that there are too many of these zebra mussels which also leads to me that they're a very effective species. So overpopulation leads to three um, separate um, sub-problems. Um, displacement of other native species, the off balance of the food web and chain, and warming. So the first one is the displacement of other native species. So because of their effectiveness as a species, they overpopulate, so they need space. All species need space in order to thrive. They take that space away from the native species that have been mentioned in the beginning. And since those native species don't have any space to actually live, they just die. They, because of overpopulation, they also compete for resources such as food. Since the zebra mussels are such an effective species, they just take the food from other mussels that also need to be back. Same thing. So, space to other native species. Second sub problem is the off balance of the food web and chain. So, as Jake said, they take their primary food source is our microorganisms such as plankton or cyanobacteria. The problem with this is that cyanobacteria um, they photosynthesize. So, since there's already a lot of zebra mussels, a lot of zebra mussels require a lot of food, then when you take out a lot of cyanobacteria, then the oxygen in the water will decrease. This will lead to like, catastrophic events such as the extinction of some species within the Great Lakes if this is not put under control. Since there will not be any oxygen in the water. So the third problem is water. So once again, back to the competing for resources. So if an organism cannot find the resources in a certain environment, that its nature is to go and look out for those resources and others. So if there's too many like, zebra mussels and that environment can't provide their way of life, then zebra mussels will go other places to look for food. 
such as human dwellings. Um, a common place to find zebra mussels in human dwellings is our drainage pipes because that's where a lot of waste comes out and waste is zebra mussels food to support the water. But the, if they overpopulate in human dwellings, then they can cause major damage. So imagine you waking up one day and finding out that your water is not working. The water is not flowing. You call and then you find out that you have to pay thousands of dollars just to remove a couple pesky muscles that are clogging it up. So that's my third point. All right, so these are the statistics and this is uh, meant to go over and give in detail what some of these problems are, like not what some of these problems are, uh, but the effect that they can have. And as you can see over on the right, that is a uh, demographic of where the zebra muscles are located. And in some areas, that's over 30,000 zebra mussels per square meter. And in total, throughout the lakes, it's 750 trillion mussels. Uh, so since uh, these mussels are filter feeders, they absorb a lot of the nutrients from the lakes. And a lot of people are concerned that this has huge environmental, and especially economic impacts. Uh, one of these is that because they are taking these nutrients, the fish population will decline, and it has uh, by nearly one third. So you can see in this chart, as the zebra mussel population increases, the native mussel population decreases. Uh, and this is the same for a lot of other species like salmon that have also decreased. Uh, and all this, uh, these zebra mussels together impact tourism as they all group together and are like quite unneighborly as one neighbor once said. Or like neighborly. Uh, and that reduces the tourism rate. And as he mentioned, uh, it is very expensive to clean up these uh, zebra mussels, especially when they're in pipes. Uh, one neighboring facility had to pay $800,000 just to repair a grate. And in total, a lot of these facilities and industrial places around it need to pay over 200 or two million dollars a year to repair them and uh, the, the, the decrease in the fish populations has also uh, affected the recreational and commercial fishing rates and has negatively impacted the 3.4 billion dollar commercial and, and fishing industry uh, which employs more than 10,000 people in the region. All right, so we had three solutions to solve this zebra mussel crisis. So we had a uh, bacterial selective agent, uh, back partial, partial pressure carbon dioxide, and derivative of the soil bacteria. All right, so solution one, bacteria as a selective agent. So solution, so scientists discovered a strain of bacteria while they were working with it and looking for uh, new solutions to uh, try to eliminate the, or at least decrease the zebra mussel population. They discovered a strain of bacteria, you can see that there. I'm not, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. Uh, so anyway, the effect from this. So the bacteria strain uh, had an effect on the zebra mussels when it applied for 1.5 to 12 hours. And actually when they uh, applied a little bit over that, so anything more than 12 hours, the, actual, the, mortar the mortality rate of the zebra mussels killed, that would go down actually. So 1.5 to 12 hours was the best time for the uh, application of this. So the effect on native species, no known research was uh, applied to um, affect the native species. So the article that I got the information from, they didn't claim anything about their um, studying the effect on native species. So limitations was there's not enough, res not enough research known on effective non-target species, which are those native species. Okay, so solution two, partial pressure carbon dioxide. Solution. So researchers tested uh, partial pressure carbon dioxide or PCO2 on the, on the zebra mussel pop, uh, population. So the mortality, bicycle thread from affirmation, and attachment of zebra mussels were all tested. And so the effectiveness was 24 hours of elevated PCO2 resulted in a population decline of zebra mussels and reduced the attachment. So as we said earlier, the zebra mussels are known to attach themselves to many objects, which is causing them to be a nuisance. And uh, it's also a huge effect on the economy as these, uh, this equipment in the water has to constantly be replaced. 
So 96 hours of this PCO2 caused 80% to 100% mortality of the zebra mussels at all of the treatment levels, which is really good. So 96 hours is required now for uh, if we want to like eliminate the population. So effective native species. So those less damage than chemicals. So chemicals is actually we've been used uh, before, and it does kill zebra mussels, but it also does harm native life. So all of these solutions are focused on safe, eco-friendly uh, solutions. So limitations. So native mussels, uh, ju juvenile native mussels, were affected, but uh, not too badly. Uh, solution three: derivative of soil bacterium, and this was uh, the one we actually, uh, the one that seemed to be the most optimistic. So researchers discovered use of a substance called Zequinox is derived from a common North American soil bacterium. So it has been tested and used on the zebra mussel population. And what it does is it breaks down the stomach lining uh, more quickly. And more research has to be done to fully prove its effectiveness, but it does seem like it is um, going to work. Because, so the thing is, it doesn't really affect native species because the native mussel species are adapted to this North American soil bacterium. But the zebra mussels, which were brought from Europe, have not adapted to the soil bacterium, which is why they're affected and native species are not affected. So some limitations are lack of research and the size of the Great Lakes. Any questions? Perfect, thanks.